Guys, so today I'm going to show you or go over the workflow between Fusion 360, Illustrator, and how to upload those files to Shaper Hub uh, for use in the Shaper Origin uh, without having to use a USB stick. So the idea behind this video is to highlight some of the key elements of my design uh, that are important as I'm cutting this part and to show you how I address those items. So some of the things to, to notice is that number one, this is a two-sided part. So there's operations on the bottom and operations on the top that need to coincide. Um, additionally, this is a part that is going to fit into a small CNC machine into an existing frame. So the location of these holes on the perimeter it's crucial and it's very important that I get those correct. And um, I have no doubt that the shaper can do that. It's done it before. Um, and also the, um, the wasteboard uh, has this grid pattern. So these holes are threaded, um, are going to receive threaded inserts. So not only do I need to cut them from the top, uh, they, also, they also need to be cut from the bottom. So, or, or from the bottom, either way. Uh, the whole point is that the location needs to match. So that's crucial uh, in terms of this design. There's also fillets on the, uh, on the corners. And typically, uh, you know, while I could do this on the CNC machine, uh, my bed is not big enough to make this part. So typically these are done uh, on a much larger machine. So I think the shaper, uh, at least for me, allows me to go outside uh, my traditional CNC machine and make things that are much larger with just uh, as good of a precision. So let's go and take a look at the export. So number one, uh, oh, before we do that, let's take a look at the operations. What makes this up? Just so we have an understanding, this is essentially a series of sketches. And this is important because this is sort of how Origin will start to understand this this body or the solid component. So as you can see, I have the surface that's the top of the table. And then I have a couple of shapes or sketches that define the hole that uh, it's going through to punch that through. And then the pocketing. Okay, I have similar operations for the other holes around and for the features underneath. So there's a couple of sketches here. Um, to define this part. Now, when I'm exporting this, I'll turn this off for clarity. Um, as I export this, what you want to keep in mind, or as you're exporting anything for Fusion, is that you need to have or identify a flat face. So in this case, for me, imagine that Shaper is going to be writing on this blue face and is going to be cutting in these pockets, these holes, and going through and, and cutting this on this side. And on the other side is going to be pocketing the back of these inserts. Um, so when you keep that in mind, I'm going to go and click on Shaper Orange and uh, Export. And um, what I find out that for now, we'll do a video later on on the advanced um, export options. But for now, for a simple part like this, just selecting the top face that's going to be uh, my datum uh, or my touch of surface, let's think of it that way, um, works well enough. So I'm going to hit OK. And after a moment, this should take me out to my export folder. So um, I'm going to do a top. And I'm going to do the bottom. What you'll see is that when I open these files in Illustrator, uh, the exporter will have recognized or taken in all these dips and machining operations that need to happen off of this main phase, right? So it will have captured the holes, it will have captured the, the, the bottom or the shape of this. Keep in mind that even though this is a three-dimensional part, I am still responsible to go and key in this dimension later on uh, inside of Origin. So um, that's going to be uh, 
something that I'm responsible for that the software doesn't do. Okay, so that's it for the Fusion side. Let's take a look at the Illustrator side of things. So right off the bat in Illustrator, uh, as you all know, Shaper has given us this color palette or, or regions or, or, or shapes with different colors. And all I've done is to make my life a little easier is figure out what the RGB value for the numbers are or is. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up the exports. So I'm going to open up both at the same time. Okay, so we're going to start with the top. I'm going to zoom out with the Alt key and my scroll mouse button. And this doesn't look very much anything like what the model shows. Uh, and the reason for that is that all the outlines are very thick. So I'm going to do Control A, which is the first thing I like to do. And I like to pull up my property palettes or palette and go to the stroke and change that to 0.25. Now things start to look a little bit more like the model. So um, if I go back to Fusion, this is sort of what we're looking at, right? On the Illustrator side, okay? So, so far so good. You can see that it's taken the shape of the table or, or the wasteboard as, a, as an outside cut. So it's giving me the little white region on the outside, so I should be able to come in with a router and cut this around, which is nice. It's giving me a pocketing um, operation, and it's giving me a through cut. So this is very good. Let's go back to the bottom. Bottom, same thing. So select all and do that. Now, this is not necessary, but it helps me visualize and do a little bit of quality control to see, to make sure that my parts have been exported properly. Now, I want you to notice that this part, look at this edge here, okay? It's on this side, it's on the right side of the screen, and on the top, it's on the left side of the screen. So it's kind of like split the part over or open. Um, so that's something you got to keep in mind when you're bringing these files into Origin uh, or onto the physical board um, once you're going to cut them. So what I like to do here is to kind of make sure that I am aligned or in alignment. Uh, if this is the, uh, the bottom, what I will probably do is I will take all these circles. And we'll probably make them guides, make them all blue. So uh, at the moment, it's a little bit cumbersome to kind of try to select all these, but I can try to just go like this. Okay, guys, so I paused the video because I did not want to bore you while I was going and locking all these other operations that I don't want to change. But because we have a guide, which is 0, 1, 4, 2, 20, uh, 255, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the holes that were cut or that will be cut from the top. So I'm switching over to the top to show you that all these holes will be cut from the top. And I am going to change their stroke pattern or color. to RGB 0, 104, 255. Okay, so now all these shapes will be ignored, quote unquote, and you will only be able to, or, or it'll just make it a little bit easier to be able to select this pocket. So. Um, when we talk about guides, the other thing that I like to do is I like to create a new layer, layer number two, and I like to use my pen tool when I'm doing something like this to sort of go ahead and draw a couple of, of grid lines, like so. 
Okay, just make sure that these are the right color. They look like they are. Um, and I do this just to make sure that things are nice and straight and I'm following the design. Uh, this is really not necessary, but sort of a safety net for me. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to complete the file so you can see the file. Okay, guys, so I'm back. I've created a couple of grids. Um, these are all blue, so they will be red as guidelines. And I really don't need this bottom shape because I'm going to be cutting this from the top, those radiuses. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a couple of changes. So number one, the stroke is going to be, um, again, 0, 104, 255. And I'm going to change it to no fill. And at that point, you see that it all be, just becomes reference. And that's about as good as it gets for this particular file. I could do the same thing for the top, put in the grids, but I will not bore you uh, with that. But the difference with this particular file is that everything on the top will get cut, including the outline. Okay. One more thing, guys, before jumping into the Shaper Hub. Um, I went ahead and finished the top wasteboard layout here and I wanted to make uh, one comment. So I have these, uh, oh, this grid pattern delineated the center of these holes um, and it's, uh, it's blue. So it's basically a guideline. So now the great thing about Origin is that once I'm done um, cutting all these holes, I can go ahead and select these inside the actual shape or Origin and change them to be an online cut so that I can score these lines and have a physical grid pattern on the machine. By the same token, I could take any of these shapes and change them from a pocket to an inside cut and so forth. So um, there's a lot of flexibility inside the machine also in case that you perhaps change your mind or you need to adjust something on the field, so to speak. Uh, as you can tell, um, I've also added the depth of this pocket right here as a guide. So this will give me a little bit of a heads up and I've gone ahead and done the same thing for the bottom operation. So I don't have to take a cut sheet this time around. Um, and that's it. Now in this case, I'm done. I'm going to save this. And this is sort of the end of that portion. Okay guys, so now I am inside a browser, inside my Shaper Hub, so I've logged in. And I do this because I don't want to have to track a memory stick. So the workflow is I like to essentially use the Wi-Fi capabilities of the device uh, to, to transfer files. So once you log in, you go to My Origin Files. You can create folders. So I have a folder for a previous project. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just upload the last two files we worked on. So I can select both at the same time, which is great. And I'm going to make a folder and I'm going to call this wasteboard. Okay, so now what I can do is I can select these files and drag and drop them, and they're inside, they're ready to be cut. And this concludes the workflow on the software side. Now, um, I just need to go up to my origin, download the files from there, and I'm good to start cutting. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer them. If you have anything to comment on to make this better or anything I miss, also do let me know.